Welcome to UG50 and Beyond, Your Vision, Our Mission. This program is produced by the Public Relations Division of the University of Guyana and seeks to highlight the programs and offerings of the university. My name is Lisa Sumra and I am the host. In studio with me, I have representatives from the School of Entrepreneurship and Business Innovation who will be speaking about some of the programs and initiatives of the school. To my right is Miss Cassandra Karen, and she is the academic advisor for the school. Mm -hmm. To her right is Mr. Yu Todd, and he is the assistant dean of SEBI. Welcome. Thank you, Thank you for okay. having us. I know SEBI started approximately, this year will be two years Second since. Second year, yes. Okay. Um, some of the programs that were traditionally offered in the Faculty of Social Sciences were transferred, a few were transferred yes, to SEBI. Mm -hmm. Tell us about those programs and some of the others that are currently being offered. Well, under the department within the Social Sciences Faculty, we had uh, one degree program, uh, which was the degree in business management. Okay. Subsequently, we offered a new program uh, degree in marketing. So we transferred both programs into the new outfit, which is the business school. But those programs will be gradually phased out when those students who were currently under that program would have uh, graduated. And we also had and still have the diploma programs that existed when we were department, which would be the Diploma in Accountancy, Diploma in Banking and Finance, and a Diploma in Marketing. Uh, currently, we're revising and upgrading the Diploma in Banking and Finance to make adjustments to, to meet the, the changing environment within the, the Banking and Finance um, arena. So we're now revising that program. So hopefully, and I think Ms. Karan is part of that committee, hopefully we should have that program up and running um, in the new semester. Mm -hmm. Okay, before we get into criteria for entry mm -hmm. and so forth, tell us briefly, what is the premise of, of SEBI? Why is SEBI important, especially now? As we know, education is a, a, a key pillar for development and driving competitiveness. And business really is what drive um, or drives economies, or drive economies. And what we've recognized through our engagements with our key stakeholders within the environment, we recognize that the department that existed under the social sciences faculty was deficient okay. um, to meet the needs of, of what existed in the, in the environment. And given the fact that we are now transitioning to an oil-led economy, we recognize that we needed to, to broaden and deepen our scope and product offering. So, uh, we went through a series of engagements, um, an intensive feasibility study, which we saw uh, movement throughout the three counties of, of Guyana. Mm -hmm. And we were able to come up with a very tight and robust package um, to transition from a department into a business school. So the business school is, is actually broad in scope. Um, and what you have to understand, too, is that the economies in the contemporary era move and advance through innovation and creativity. Mm -hmm. um, so what existed under the department were basically instruction that would have led to management principles and management functions. So we're teaching persons to become better managers within companies. That is not what is sufficient for economies in a, in a globalized environment where competitiveness is a key indicator. So what we recognize is that we need to equip students um, with skills and competencies to be able to become more innovative, creative. So when they go into the environment, they can actually be employers and not employees. Um, and even for those who are employer, who are employees, we want them to have the skills to become entrepreneurial, okay. meaning that they can actually go into companies, look for gaps within the environment, and move um, an, a, a company beyond what it is in its current state. So looking at you know, opportunities for blue ocean strategies, and other areas where they can actually grow the, the, the company. 
And for those students who are already entrepreneurial instinctively, mm -hmm. we're giving them the tools that they can out actually go out there and make a difference for themselves and for the community and by extension for the country as a whole. So it's actually broader and deeper in scope. And it's, it's a reality that, that we're comfortable with. Um, our key stakeholders are pretty satisfied with what we've done. And we were able to streamline the schooling to several programs um, to meet the current needs um, of, of the environment. So it's, it's, it's more complete and more comprehensive. Um, and it is structured in such a way that we give students an opportunity to make a real firm decision as, as to what discipline they really want to focus on. Because okay. students coming in at 17, 18 may want to do management. And after a year or two, they recognize that I'm not really so interested in management. <laughs> exactly. I want to move into finance or mm -hmm. supply chain um, or entrepreneurship. So they have that ability to move within the school um, and settle in on a discipline that they believe that they are more passionate about. Um, so all in all, we're trying to give our, our students um, the opportunity to make a difference in the environment. And we're hoping that most of them stay because we know that the statistics show that 85% of our tertiary level students migrate, mm, but we're hoping people. with the transition of the economy and the fact that we're now broaden our scope to give them more opportunities in terms of learning, um, that they'll be able to go out there and use the skills acquired to make a difference. There are also some short courses that are currently being offered. Yes. Tell us about those. Actually, we, as a school, we want to have uh, packages that go beyond um, four years um, because what we recognize is that we have business executives mm -hmm. and some persons who are now startups um, who already know what they want to do and they understand the, the business that they're in but they may need some additional skills um, to help move their business so what we're trying to do is to or we've started actually is to package short courses in finance um, in supply chain management, etc., so that we can give them additional skill sets to help move their their, their businesses because they they don't have the time to sit in a class every day for four years. And when you say short so courses, what time frame can, are we looking at? It can last between six weeks to two months. Okay. Short packages, very condensed and very applicable to what they want to do. So it's more, it's less theory and more practical mm -hmm. um, so that it can fit wh exactly what they're doing. All right? We're also working on bespoke packages for companies who may want to add value to, let's say, their human resource or their, or their, uh, their human resource skills or their service skills. Mm -hmm. um, we're working on packages like that. So companies can actually approach us um, for us to design a package to suit, tailored to suit their, their needs. And what are the general entry requirements for the programs? I'll, I'll give them sure. this under, <laughs> Ms. Karen. Yeah, I deal with that mostly. Um, UG has a general entry requirements, mm -hmm. five CXE subjects, mm -hmm. but for us we need the English and maths, at least a grade three. Okay. Because our programs are mostly maths based. Based. So some students, if you don't have the maths, we do an uh, entrance exam. Mm -hmm. um, so students have an opportunity to try and make up for that, but the basic entry requirements is just five CXE subjects, English and maths. And to add to uh, Ms. Karan's um, statement, we have removed from the old um, structure where we dealt with five subjects, grade one to three, mm -hmm. um, in one sitting, and then two um, mm -hmm. at, sorry, how it works again. Five at one mm -hmm. or six at two mm -hmm. settings. Yeah. Now we've collapsed that and we're okay. taking all students with five CXE subjects inclusive, inclusive of math and English right. across the board. So if okay. you did math right. five times mm -hmm. and you passed it on the fifth mm -hmm. um, assessment, then you're still eligible to, 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 to qualify. So we are actually adhering to the whole principle of a national university so that no student or no prospective applicant is ex is excluded um, from gaining entrance to the university 
so it's it's much easier um, but it does not say that it does not speak to the rigor and the quality of the program itself it's still they still have to apply themselves mm -hmm. when they enter and Ms. Karan and our other academic advisor they are there to to guide students who process. may need need assistance in terms of how to charter their course right. um, on a case-by-case -case basis right. okay a little birdie told me that the school has some students with some entrepreneurial poten potential mm -hmm. and they ha have projects that they've been working on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little about those um, initiatives. Well, some of those students, they are either enrolled with the management program mm -hmm. or we have the entrepreneurship degree program. So a lot of our students enrolled in, in that degree program have goals or have their own businesses. or So they're working towards developing their business. What we do, we collaborate with other faculties and mm -hmm. other businesses and um, other students as well who are interested in learning and, and, and looking for that type of exposure. So I think some students are learning how to manage, how to develop, all those little skills that they need going mm -hmm. forward with, with their, their own businesses. What about projects? Do you see potential in some of the projects that they um, have identified? Oh yeah. We have a lot of really, really innovative um, projects. I think some students are looking to even develop them further mm -hmm. and working with other faculties in particular. Some students, um, like uh, he was saying, they're, they're working on being creative mm -hmm. or they're trying to bring that um, aspect. So to me, there's a lot of potential and um, there are a lot of good ideas. And, and the, the potential of working together mm -hmm. is the main thing. Okay. If a student does not become an entrepreneur, what are some of the other avenues that they can work or the other sectors that they can work in? Having acquired a degree from the school or a diploma, what are some of the other sectors that they can work in? Well, well if I can jump in. Yeah, sure. what, what we're preparing them to do um, is really to be very productive mm -hmm. and uh, creative and innovative thinkers. So even if they finish their four years degree program and they do not have a business mm -hmm. idea as yet, mm -hmm. they can be very, very effective within the business environment. And not because it's a business school means that they're confined to business in the private sector. They can also function quite well in the public sector okay. um, because the public sector sh should also be very efficient. Mm -hmm. um, because the public and private, they both would make a good marriage to mm -hmm. drive an economy. So they can also be very effective within the, within the public sector. So Ministry of Finance mm -hmm. is one of the, the uh, outfits that they can, they can function very well in. Ministry of Business, um, Infrastructure, um, in, in the, uh, what's the other one, the extractive industry sector. Mm -hmm. they, they can function very well in various capacities because they will still have to market, brand, and drive the process. So using our students can actually add value. So even though they are trained to, to look at the bottom line, which mm -hmm. is really making profits, mm -hmm. they can still add value in, in, in the public sector as well. Even though we know, generally speaking, public sectors are generally inefficient, they can provide good good service um, for the public sector so they can straddle both public and private and also non-governmental organizations as we know we have a lot of NGOs um, um, coming on stream and the NGO, NGOs are also now moving towards being very entrepreneurial yes. so they can actually be very very vital in helping to to shape and to drive um, those NGOs who um, that are actually established and, and, and operating in Ghana at the moment. So the, the, the scope is, is very wide, is very wide very for wide. the students coming out of the business school because we give them a general uh, understanding of how to operate in organizations mm -hmm. generally. So we have courses that are specifically um, geared to target institutions and how they work and how to function in institutions so they, they can be a good fit in any organization, whether it's governmental, private, or non-governmental or not-for-profit. Mm -hmm. The reason why I asked that question, because the school, the name of the school in mm -hmm. itself, 
School of Entrepreneurship and Business Innovation, you would think mm -hmm. entrepreneurship, you know. Yes. So what are the other alternatives? Yes, yes. That's our core, but mm -hmm. they can still function in, in other outside capacities, of that. outside of business. Mm -hmm. Okay. Talk about some of the initiatives of SEBI. I know that there are numerous initiatives, collaborative initiatives. Talk about some of those. Um, there's the Entrepreneurship and Diaspora Conference. Mm -hmm. um, there was the local content mm -hmm. forum. Yeah. Um, tell us a little about those. Yeah, th those initiatives um, we've embarked on to, to give um, the people of Ghana a, a, a broader understanding of the, the, the role of the business school. Mm -hmm. We're not just classroom focused, but we're also <coughs> equipped to to go beyond what we teach in the classroom and to bring um, visibility beyond that. So hosting conferences, um, uh, dealing with collaboration with, with companies and so on are all part and parcel of our broader mm -hmm. vision um, because we're not just classroom based as I yeah. said. Um, so hosting conferences is a good way of inviting other experts within the field to come and, and give their um, their understanding and, mm -hmm. and, they, and and help to share some of their expertise because we can we can draw from learn that learn from that um, so the the conference coming up in I think it's June I think it is mm -hmm. um, July mm -hmm. is part of of the the scope that 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 we reach out to 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 meet and that is. That is consistent with how business schools operate mm -hmm. generally, um, going beyond the classroom. Because with that, you're able to attract uh, more minds and brains, uh, which we can learn from. Because we're not just focused on what we have here, talent here, but we want also to we want to also attract talent from further field. And we, as you know, we have a repository of of good talent within the diaspora, and we're looking to invite them and tap into that talent and using the business school as a platform mm -hmm. is is a good pull a good pull factor um to get those persons on board and uh, and i've um, the feedback i've gotten is that it's it's actually gaining a lot of traction and there's a lot of um, interest um from the diaspora and further afield okay for those of us who don't know what is local content Mm -hmm. What is local content and why is it so important? Because there's a lot of talk about local content. Some of us may not know what local content really okay. means, you know. Well, it, it, generally speaking, it, it really speaks to a fraction of, of the productive activity mm -hmm. th which we should own. Um, and if we're talking about oil, mm -hmm. um, and given the fact that we're not at that technological stage where we can actually dominate mm -hmm. the industry, um, we can actually be pushed aside. Yes. Um, so that we must have legislation in place mm -hmm. so that we citizens of Ghana can benefit. Um, and that is for the policy makers to, yes. to, to jump on. But for, for us as a business school, our we, 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 we our role is to be an advocate, mm -hmm. um, to, to give guidance um, and to, to give visibility to the to the value and the meaning of local content and why it's important um, because if you don't have local content legislation um, you can actually be left behind and most of what is done here we would not benefit from yeah. um, and that is why local content is, is, is very important and that is why you'll find that policy makers on either side would take it very seriously because it speaks to how much we can benefit directly yeah. from from the productive activity. Yeah, no, needs to get the best deal out of it. I went to an interest, interesting presentation the other day, um, Dr. Professor Roger Hussein. Mm -hmm. um, he was, he spoke, mm -hmm. yes, Yui. He spoke about the readiness of Guyana for the pending oil boom. And one of the things that came out of that presentation is the fact that the labor force participation rate is so low. Mm -hmm. Right, and we need to increase that in order, otherwise we have to import labor, which brings us back to the same thing because our mm -hmm. skilled labor is leaving and so on. So that was interesting and he spoke about the need to prepare our people now 
you know, like yesterday, yeah. you know. So um, how important is SEBI to the economic development of Guyana? Well, I would say it's very, very vital. Um, in my opening statement, I mentioned that economies or the success of economies um, is actually driven based on its competitiveness. And to be, com and to be competitive, you have to be innovative. Um, Guyana is still at the stage of development where we're still working on efficiency, mm -hmm. uh, making our institutions more efficient um, and making our labor more efficient. Um, we still lag in, in, in technology in terms of advancement. So the business school provides a bridge um, in preparing young minds, mm -hmm. well, not to discriminate, and older minds, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, because we, we have mature students also joining yes. us, um, to go there and to, and to have that trained eye to actually see the gaps. Because if you don't have the training, you would not have the right lens to see where the gaps are and where you can make a difference. Because it's all about being cre creative and being innovative. Um, and that is important in adding value to what currently exists um, within the business environment. You hear many stories about businesses um, don't want to give up ownership, um, they're tardy, um, mm -hmm. they're not creative, they're not innovative. Um, and be, based on the fact that Ghana is still pretty much, when I say Ghana, I'm speaking here about the private sector, it is still pretty much dominated by business, um, uh, family ownership. Mm -hmm. um, you will find that sometimes the business can outgrow the, the CEO who started the company and probably has his two sons or a son or his daughter mm -hmm. working who may not be well trained. So you'll need help um, and the university provides that, that, that buffer um, to help move economies beyond, businesses sorry, mm -hmm. beyond what currently exists because they're not very innovative, they're not very creative, and they're not competitive. And if you look at how we participate within our community, CSME itself, we're lagging in terms of our competitiveness. And that is why you will find on the shelves of supermarkets, et cetera, et cetera, you have more products Important. from Jamaica and, and Trinidad and Barbados here in mm -hmm. Ghana. And if you go to those countries, you don't see our products on their yes. shelves <laughs> because we're not as innovative mm -hmm. and we're not as, as, as creative. Uh, many pin that to the cost of energy, but the cost of energy is just one aspect mm -hmm. of, of your competitiveness. But you still have to have the human touch, that, the brains behind it. And as the business school, that is what we are aiming to, to achieve, to put people out there who can actually move these companies um, and make them more, more competitive. Great. Ms. Karen, yeah. why should... Uh, potential student join SEBI? Why should? Mm -hmm. Well, the main thing I always tell prospective students or even continuing students who are interested in pursuing the degree, it's an updated degree program. So now we're offering a Bachelor of Science in Management. Um, before it was a, a Bachelor of Social Science. Mm -hmm. So that's a main pull as well for some of the students. We're also offering seven different degree programs. So it's not just marketing or management, even though they're very popular mm -hmm. with our students. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we can do, um, students can do an entrepreneurship degree, an mm -hmm. accountancy degree, um, a supply chain management, which mm -hmm. is very new. And we have a tourism management, and of course a finance degree. So students have the option to do, depending on their field. And um, because the programs went through an upgrade, they added a few extra courses and stuff, so students now have to do a foreign language. Great. So mm -hmm. all business students mm -hmm. now. It's a really big initiative, I think. Well, Some we're heading students, that way, foreign right, language. Right, they have an option to choose any elective, any mm -hmm. language they want, as long as they do one. We also offer, um, they have to choose a science subject mm -hmm. now. So some students are a little hesitant, but I think the changes are drawing a whole different type of students, mm -hmm. students who have that innovative mind Great. or who wants to be part of the new, the new group um, coming out of a school of entrepreneurship. Great. Sabi is doing great things. Yeah. Mr. Yes. Todd, final thoughts before we wrap? 
I would encourage those prospective uh, candidates to, to to get busy, register, mm -hmm. come join us. Um, the opportunities are endless, um, and it's a good time to be part of, of the business school and the wider university community. Uh, the experience within the business school will prepare them for Guyana um, with the promise of oil mm -hmm. and the spill-offs or spillovers as well as the diversification that would ensue. Um, and it, it also provides them with a broader experience because they get to interact with students from different faculties, they mm -hmm. get to interact with students from the social sciences faculty, they may make best friends in the economics department, and they get a chance to explore um, the university community that can actually add to their overall development. So it's not just about studies, um, there are other activities that they can get involved in, they can be part of the student body. Um, they, they what can about clubs? We have clubs, clubs as well, right. different okay. societies. So it's broader than just studies. Mm -hmm. um, some people believe that four years is a lot of time, so let me go work. It goes by quickly. But I always <laughs> encourage them to start now. Mm -hmm. Four years, you, you're only in class for 13 weeks, um, total of 26 weeks for the year. We have, what, 52 weeks, weeks in a year, mm -hmm. and the time goes by, and you still have time for everything else. So you don't have to give up your entire life. You, still could, you can still have a life um, doing what you do at the university. So it is a good time to start. The time to start is now. Mm -hmm. um, you will have challenges. You will have opportunity costs. So you have to take the initiative now. Um, we have additional support with our academic advisors who can actually provide that mentoring and, and, and and keep them going and you know help to motivate them because we know students come with a lot of challenges um, and some can be very tough um, but we always encourage them to to make that start and to, and to get on board because when they do it now the four years they'll, they'll be paid back ten times fold so mm -hmm. it's we always encourage them to come on board and to experience university and when they come, they actually tell you that I never thought it would have been this exciting. It's really, it's really True. nice. It's, it's yeah. a good experience. So that is my parting thought. Ms. Karen, mm -hmm. how can they access you? They could just come visit us. Mm -hmm. um, we are, I'm on campus uh, Monday to Friday. We have two advisors with SEBI, um, prospective students, current students. Um, I, I'm there. I'm just encouraged students to come meet with us discuss even if you're thinking about doing something with our faculty or with UG in general. Mm -hmm. I will encourage any students to reach out to us, come visit. Uh, we have our numbers on our website. On website. Check our Facebook. Um, mm -hmm. You can message. Anything you, you know, phone, if you're coming in to visit, anything like that, just reach out and we're there. Thank you so Thank much you, there. I was chatting with Mr. Todd and Ms. Karen from SEBI, the School of Entrepreneurship and Business Innovation. Should you require additional information about SEBI, you can go to sebi.org.edu.gy. Thank you for watching.